Hey guys, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to turn your default GNOME look into macOS Catalina. And so I'm going to be giving you a step-by-step -step guide on what themes to install and how to install them. And the uh, distro that I'm going to be using in this video is Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, so if you have um, a different type of distro, then the installation might be a bit different for some stuff. But as a whole, uh, the general procedure is going to be the same. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to have to do if you're using Ubuntu 20.04 is open up the terminal and then type up this command. Type up sudo apt-add-repository oops universe and so I've already done this and keep in mind this is something you're going to be seeing uh, often throughout the video is that I've already done all of this stuff but it's more so to save time and I'm also going to leave all the commands that you're going to need and links down in the description below so once you've done this and let me explain why you need to do this you need to do this because it doesn't uh, the 20.04 version doesn't come with this repository added by default so you have to manually add it so that you're able to do sudo apt install gnome dash tweak dash tool uh, so I already have this installed again but without this without this repository you're not able to install the gnome tweak tool and this is the tool that you're going to need that you can launch up from the activities menu here and this is going to be the primary tool that we're going to be using to apply uh, all of the themes and whatnot that we're going to be installing so once we have this installed there's one more thing uh, that you're going to want to install. Actually, two more things. Uh, so do sudo apt install gnome dash shell extensions. Oops. Okay, my bad. Gnome dash shell dash extensions. Okay, so this is going to allow us uh, to change our shell themes. Um, because we don't really need to be using a lot of extensions for um, this particular setup, but uh, it's always good to have. And another thing is do sudo apt install deconf dash editor. And so have these installed. Uh, so I explained the first one as well as the extensions, but I'm going to explain this uh, deconf editor a bit later down the line. So these are going to be the themes that you're going you're going to need to be installing and I um, these ones are pretty uh, recent so I figured they look pretty good so these are the ones that we're going to be installing again the links going to be in the description so go ahead and click download and the ones that you want to download are the first two and there is a third one that's a transparent mode uh, but it's a bit too transparent transparent and considering the fact that uh, gnome still doesn't uh, support blur it's not going to look very good uh, so just click on the links and then it's going to give you a prompt if you want to save the file you're going to save it in your downloads folder or wherever um, but i currently don't have internet so i can't really do that uh, but anyway once you have it installed you can go to your downloads folder and then you're going to have the package. So the packages are going to be these two. They're going to be called MicOS or <laughs> MacOS, MCOS, essentially Catalina uh, dash GNOME, and then there's the dash GNOME dark version. Okay, so these are going to be the two light and dark themes uh, that we're going to be applying. So what you have to do is open up the terminal and type sudo nautilus. So what this is going to do is open the file manager, giving you uh, root privileges. So go to file system and then you can press the search icon here and type slash USR slash share slash themes. Or perhaps not that. Uh, my bad. Okay, so instead of pressing the uh, search icon, uh, you uh, press a keyboard shortcut, and that is Control L. Uh, 
and you don't have to do this you could just go to the folders themselves usr and then share um, but uh, an easier way is to just type control l and then go here in the search address and type slash themes and press enter and so this is where you want to drag and drop your installed themes into here and as you can see i have the folders already put into um the proper folder um, and of course when you have them installed they're in .tar.xz format so you're going to have to right click on them and click extract here for both of them now one thing to keep in mind is when you do extract them there's going to be a progress bar here at the top uh, if it doesn't appear then uh, it's because it's extracted but if it does you have to first wait for it to fully extract before you can uh, put them in the uh, given folder. So once you've done this, you can go ahead and open up your tweaks tool. And if we go ahead and go to appearance, we can see uh, in the theme section that we have these two themes and we can go ahead and apply them. But I'm not going to apply them just yet. Um, I'm going to apply everything in the in the end, let's see here. Okay, so OBS is still recording. Um, okay, so now that you can check that, I'm go actually going to exit out of the tweak tool for now. Um, now that we can check that that's been installed, we'll go back to Firefox. And the second link that I'll be providing is the icon theme. And again, you can go to downloads. And the one that you're going to want to install is Cupertino Catalina. So install that. It's most likely going to appear in your downloads folder. And as you can see, it's right here for me. Again, right click, click extract here so that we can get the folder. And this is the progress bar that I was talking about. This one is 23 megabytes, so that's why it's going to uh, take more time to extract. Um, but now we have to go back to slash USR slash share and look for the icons folder. But again, I'm going to do controls and L and type slash icons for uh, faster access to the folder. And again, you just move and drag the um, folder into this folder. And as you can see, I've also already done that. So this is going to give us uh, the application style and the icons. Now I've tried uh, various icon themes and I feel like this one fits the best because I've seen other ones that um, are oversized for some reason. And also I'm going to give a link to this post uh, showcasing the default uh, wallpaper if you want to use that. Of course this is just optional. And the final thing is the shell theme. Uh, I couldn't really find any good shell themes, so there, I'm going to showcase two shell themes. Uh, and if you want to download this, you can go ahead and uh, download the Mac OS 11 Dell or shell version. And it also gives you some instructions here on what to do. Um, once you have this one installed, again, you're go going to have the zip files. All you have to do is extract them um, and then go to your home folder, press Control H to show hidden folders, or there's also an option here uh, to show hidden files. And once you have that, uh, you're going to have to right click on it, type, uh, click new folder, and then type dot themes. And again, I've already done this. It's going to create this folder. And then you're going to have to drag the installed uh, shell th uh, themes that you've extracted into folders, you're going to have to drag them here. And that's how you're going to be able to um, apply them when you open up the GNOME Tweak tool. So these are really the main four things that I have here when it comes to this theme and the overall look. Uh, so once you've dragged everything into your icons and themes folders, uh, you can close out of the terminal and the uh, file manager and go back to tweaks and if everything worked correctly then under applications you'll have the light version and dark version now in the beginning of the video I showcased the light version so for the rest of the video I'm gonna showcase the dark version
Uh, when it comes to the cursor, the default cursor, in my opinion, looks uh, just similar enough to the default Mac OS cursor, so we're just gonna leave it at that. Um, but the procedure, if you do want something else for the cursor, it is the same as the icons. You go to slash USR slash share slash icons, uh, and after you've downloaded um, a cursor theme, you extract the folder and you move that folder into the icons uh, folder section, and then you can, um, it's going to appear here. And if something doesn't appear, um, if you install like an icon theme or something and it doesn't appear in the tweaks uh, application, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to restart the application and it should appear. Now for the icons, we're going to go ahead and apply the OS Catalina Night icons because we're using dark mode. Now for the shell, um, once you install this Mac OS Catalina application theme that this is uh, from the first link uh, that you can see here um, this right here it already comes with uh, the light mode and dark mode uh, shell themes and if we take a look at them this is what they look like this is the light mode in my opinion it's not that good because uh, it does look the panel looks a bit too thick but the dark mode is a bit better um, it definitely looks actually a lot better this is how it looks and then the other ones that I showcased uh, when you take a look at this final link here, uh, this shell theme, um, it doesn't really look very much like the original, but um, it is something that you may be interested in and um, it uh, definitely adds a bit more uniqueness to the entire look. But I'm just going to go ahead with uh, this one. Uh, now when it comes to the extensions, um, this is what... Uh, you installed previously in the video if you followed the uh, gnome-shell-extensions if you install that this is uh, what you're gonna have you're gonna have um, a couple of extensions here and um, the one that you're going to want to apply is let's take a look here uh, one thing I have applied is uh, desktop icons and I went to the settings to not show any icons on the desktop um, this is just so that it looks cleaner, but of course completely optional. And in order to be able to uh, change your shell theme, uh, which I forgot to mention actually, you're going to have to have user themes enabled. I actually forgot to say this earlier in the video, unfortunately. Um, and the final thing that you're going to want to do is go to Window Title Bars and on the Placement, uh, click left. Now there's going to be some glitches with this theme. Uh, when you have the title bars on the left, it is kind of glitchy. Um, and as you can see, it just disappears whenever it feels like it. That's mainly for the tweak tool. I haven't really had that happen with the rest of uh, the applications. Um, but when it comes to the software store, this is the one that's going to be mainly glitched up with this uh, theme. The problem is coming from the GDK theme. And the problem, as you can see, is that um, it's completely like empty. You can only see the icons and the text. And it just it essentially breaks your software store. Um, I'm not quite sure how to use a specific GDK theme for specific applications on GNOME. Um, if that's possible, then that's your solution is to launch it using the default theme. But um, just keep that in mind, this is going to be glitched up. And also LibreOffice Writer, uh, it just, I've tried launching it up, it just spins, uh, but nothing really happens. Hopefully this doesn't freeze my system. Um, so we have almost everything set up, and this is what you, if you follow the instructions and install dconf editor, um, this is, I'm going to now explain why it was necessary, and that is because uh, we're going to have to um, switch the dock from being on the left side and extending to the bottom to acting more like a dock, uh, well, essentially the one on Mac OS. So we can do dconf-editor to launch it from the terminal. It's gonna give you prompts to be careful and let's start from the beginning here so you're going to start up with this 
Uh, and in order to navigate to the right section, you have to go to org and then GNOME. Oops, I uh, went a bit too fast. If you want to move back, you can navigate through here. So go to org and then GNOME and then scroll down to until you see shell. And then once you're in shell, you're going to want to choose dash to dock. Now, let's see what the problem is. Okay, I think it's because I don't have it enabled. So yes, errors do occur sometimes. So if we go to extensions, let's see where it was. Oh, dock right here. Let's enable that. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Nope. All right, let's uh, restart that. Shell, extensions, oh, there we go. Oh, I must have not clicked on extensions, my bad. Okay, so org, gnome, shell, extensions, and then dash to dock. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to scroll down a little bit. There's a bunch of settings. Uh, make sure auto hide is enabled for both of these. Um, although for me, it kind of glitches up. You can even um, make it more transparent, more opaque if you'd like. Um, so let's see where the settings are. There we go, dock position. We're gonna go ahead and choose bottom. And if this doesn't work, you have to disable the default uh, value, have it from green to off, so that you can manually put it to bottom, click the check mark, and as you can see now it's on the bottom. So let's navigate backwards, uh, disable extend height, and now we basically have um, a dock and if you'd like to make the dock uh, look a bit smaller you can adjust it from here uh, and of course you can uh, adjust it to your own liking and so now after we've applied all of this we have essentially what looks like um, oh I also forgot to apply the wallpaper change background of course it can be any wallpaper you'd like um, but as you can see, this looks pretty good. Um, I think that especially the apps look good apart from these icons. They're still a bit oversized for some reason. Um, but as a whole, I would say that um, let's open up a couple other applications and show you the shell, the way it looks. Um, I would say that as a whole, this looks pretty decent and... Uh, yeah, we have all these, and then we have the menu here that you can take a look with the icons, with the wallpaper and everything. And yeah, so this has been essentially how to transform your GNOME into kind of a Mac OS lookalike. And there are some bugs, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, but as a whole, yeah, I'm sure that you can do more to this. Um, there's more extensions that you can add. My bad. There's more extensions that you can add and there's more things to do. But um, as a whole, uh, this has been it. And uh, hopefully you liked this video. If you thought it was helpful, make sure to like. And also, if you have a comment, make sure to comment. Uh, also, make sure to subscribe. And that was basically it. Thanks for watching.